In today's lesson, I will cover up in terms of the IoT dashboard development. So for that particular case, I will use uh, two different software. So the first one is uh, I will show uh, on how we can develop an IoT application by using the Blink. And then uh, second part is uh, development of the IoT platform by using the ThingSpeed. So let's get started. So basically, this is the general flow on how the Bling works. So basically, uh, Bling is uh, well known for the development of the IoT application by using the mobile apps, either based on the Android platform or by using the iOS. So uh, basically, what uh, the Bling do is that uh, Bling will provide uh, two items. The first one is the uh, the IDE. Uh, sorry for uh, the first part is the software development by using the Android or iOS platform, and then a uh, second one is the Bling server. So this is uh, integrated, and then uh, later on, uh, it will provide some sort of the detailed communication protocol. So basically, by using the MQTT protocol, uh, that uh, will able to ensure that the microcontroller can be communicated to the Bling server uh, by using series of the Bling libraries. So uh, the beautiful of the Bling is that uh, you can actually uh, create the, the communication between the microcontroller to the apps, mobile apps, uh, without using any programming. Just uh, simple running the Bling and then later on everything can be done uh, in the mobile apps side. So this is the first platform, which is the Bling server. And then uh, this is the second platform uh, based on the ThingSpeak. So uh, the concept in general will be almost the same. Instead, uh, ThingSpeak will provide the backend, which is the server that store all the information. And then later on, we can view the uh, general information of data being sent from the microcontroller to the cloud. Uh, by using the ThingSpeak dashboard. So this is the first one. And then uh, second thing is that uh, ThingSpeak also prepare the mobile apps development by using the Things View apps. So uh, one of the beautiful of using the ThingSpeak is that uh, since ThingSpeak is under MATLAB platform, so more or less we can use most of the MATLAB library in order to perform the data analysis later on once we have collected the data from uh, the sensors. So uh, in general, basically the communication protocol will be based on the MQTT. So uh, the same with the Bling more or less. In the first part of the uh, this lecture, so I will show you on how we can use the uh, Bling platform uh, in order to communicate with the various of the sensors. So for that particular case, I will use the ESP32 uh, development board, but basically you can use uh, most of the available board. You can use the 8266, you can use the Arduino uh, board with the Wi-Fi connection and etc. So in general, for this particular board that I will show you uh, later on the example, so we have a series of the sensors. We have the IR sensors that was connected to uh, pin 27. And then we have two button uh, which was connected to pin 12 and 14 respectively. And then we have one actuator uh, which is the servo that was uh, the, the data. The communication for the servo was connected to the pin 13. So in general, we use uh, this portion of the area to establish the communication uh, between the sensors and also the actuator. Uh, so the next part is that uh, I will show you the concept on how we are able to develop the simple project by using the Bling application. So basically, uh, for creating the Bling application, uh, we have a two simple steps. So the first step is uh, install the Bling uh, application, uh, either by using the Android or the iOS platform. So basically, uh, this is just a straightforward process. And then the second part is uh, we need to set up the Bling in the Arduino IDE so that we can uh, install the code uh, that able to establish the communication between the sensors and uh, sensors between the sensors and also uh, to the Bling uh, server. So this is just a simple to integrated step. Uh, by less than maybe 10 minutes, you can develop your own application that able to uh, go 
control you can control uh, output by using the mobile apps and also you can see uh, some sort of the sensor data stream from the microcontroller and then was uh, sent to the plane server so let's look at the first part which is how we're able to do the install the blink platform and what uh, we can uh, configure instead of the blink platform so this is uh, some sort of the uh, simple part of the how we can use the blink platform so the first part in the left side is uh, the once we install the application uh, we need to create uh, our account that able to communicate with the blink and then let's run uh, just a simple view on how we can uh, create the new projects so uh, once we collect the new project so the next part is what type of hardware that we will use we can use uh, many type of the uh, microcontroller uh, that already built in inside of the bling such as the esp32 the not mcu arduino and etc we just need to select uh, what type of microcontroller that we will use in our projects so the next part let's say for this particular case we select the non mcu and then later on uh, we need to give some sort of the connection type it can be the wi-fi it can be the gsm bluetooth and etc so uh, once we create the new project so uh, the next part we will bling will send the uh, some authentication uh, which is the token that we can use later on uh, to uh, ensure that the microcontroller can communicate directly with this uh, uh, Blink platform that we have created. So once we have created a new project, in general, we have the widget box. So uh, if you are a new user, usually uh, your energy balance will around 2000. So as you use all the widget here, so the energy balance, uh, energy balance will be deducted uh, with respect to the what type of widget that you use. And then uh, once your energy balance is zero, you need to top up the things uh, in order to ensure that you can use most of the widget. So the beautiful of the bling means that uh, once we uh, select, let's say for this particular case, we select, uh, we select some button and then later on, uh, we can actually just uh, select uh, which pin that was connected to the uh, microcontroller. So in general, uh, we can set uh, either the uh, virtual pin or we can set to the digital pin. So depending on of our application. So I will show you later on what is the difference between the uh, virtual pin and also the uh, digital pin and uh, in what situation we need to use uh, that particular configuration. So uh, the second part of the Blink application is that uh, we need to install the library dependency. So for this particular case, uh, this is the part in which uh, you can, uh, in which you will use the microcontroller that you have selected to uh, to read the census reading, and then uh, later on to stream the data uh, to the Blink uh, server. It can be either you can uh, send a command from the Blink to the microcontroller or from the microcontroller sends the data to the Blink server. So basically, uh, this is two important link that you need to use in order to set up the uh, as a reference and also uh, you can use it uh, as the basic library. So in general, if you wish to use the Blink library, you need to download uh, this uh, Blink dependency. Uh, you can simply uh, plug in this thing into the Arduino ID and then uh, once everything was installed, you are good to go in general. Uh, one thing that you should note that uh, let's say in my case, I use the ASP32. So uh, the same thing means that I also need to install the dependency of the ASP32. So let's say you use a different type of the control, let's say ESP8266. So means that you need to install the dependency of the A266 and also uh, the Blink dependency. So uh, in the second link, so this is uh, some sort of the, uh, you can see some sort of the example, let's say uh, for each of the widget, how we can uh, control the widget, what is the command that we uh, need to uh, put in the uh, Arduino IDE. So uh, everything you can see in this example is quite uh, comprehensive and then uh, in a simple way, once you uh, open this particular link, you know almost anything about the widget, how you can control that thing by using the uh, Arduino and also 
uh, in the Blink configuration. So in general, uh, in the simple things, uh, once you set up everything, you can just, uh, let's say for this uh, simple example, you can just uh, upload this code to the Arduino IDE and then later on to the microcontroller. So once you put the uh, token here, a uh, token will be given to you once you uh, do the, you create the new project. And then you need, just need to put your, for this case, uh, since we use the Wi-Fi, so you need to put the credential information about the username and also the password. And then the command will be just uh, very simple. So the first one for the setup, you, know, uh, you just need to uh, start with this simple command, which is the bling.begin. Uh, just put the uh, authentication uh, for the SSID and also the password. So authentication will be your token uh, for Blink and then SSID is the ID, username for the Wi-Fi and password is the pass, uh, password for the Wi-Fi. So uh, once you run this command, which is Blink.run, so means that for that particular case, your microcontroller was actually connected to your application. So for that particular case, you can just uh, control everything. You can do the simple programming in the uh, using the mobile apps. And then you can establish the connection uh, between the mobile apps and also directly to the uh, microcontroller. So uh, now uh, we go to the practical example on how we can use the Bling uh, and then how we can control that things uh, by using the ESP32 and the Bling platform. In this uh, practical example, uh, we show you now on how we can control the servo uh, by using the Bling application and also how we can uh, receive the status of the infrared sensors uh, to the Bling application. So basically, this is the uh, previous setup that I, I have shown you previously in which uh, for this particular uh, situation, we have the uh, ESPD2 connected to the uh, servo motor and then we have two buttons here which is uh, will be used in order to let's say for uh, send the command of open and close uh, they are able to rotate the servo to do to two different uh, positions and then uh, in this part we add some sort of the infrared sensors uh, in order to uh, give a status to the being application so uh, for our previous example, if you still remember, once we push this button, so we are able to ensure that uh, the servo can be rotated. So for this particular part, uh, we upgraded thing by using the uh, Blink application in which we have two buttons here. So this is the first button for open and close the servo respectively and also this is the uh, IR sensor part in which it will receive uh, some sort of the uh, notification from our uh, IR sensors. So uh, I will show you the how the parts works first and then later on I will explain what is uh, inside this particular uh, coding and also the configuration. So for this part, once I press the uh, open servo, so it will rotate uh, the servo to uh, one position. And then when I push and the one, it will go to the uh, different location with respect to the open and close uh, configuration. So the second part is that uh, this is the IR sensors. Once I put the, uh, my hand here, so uh, you can see in the Bling IR sensors this part. So once I put my hand close, so uh, this light will be light on. And then once I remove, uh, and then uh, it will be light off. So uh, so all this thing was actually connected. Uh, this part by using my mobile phone uh, that was connected to the internet. Uh, and then once everything was connected we can actually control the movement uh, straight away by using the uh, link application and also we can uh, stream the data uh, straight away uh, so this is a uh, real time testing i just uh, screen testing my phone screen uh, to be recorded in the pc but apparently this is uh, more or less uh, some sort of the uh, real time application of the Bling, uh, and how we can control the server application. So uh, let's go into the details uh, of this particular part. 
So uh, first thing first, I will show you some sort of the configuration that we can see in the Blink application. So basically, uh, for the Blink application, uh, once you uh, create a new project, uh, you will receive some sort of the token. So basically, uh, you can see uh, the details of your uh, token in the uh, configuration part of the board. So uh, for this particular case, uh, so we I will have some sort of the, this is my token. So this will be my token location. So uh, I can email back the token to me so that I can uh, paste the uh, token information in the coding later on. I will show you. So uh, for this configuration, we have the ESP32 development board uh, with the Wi-Fi connection. And it is the, the project name. Uh, so in general, uh, uh, this is the two widget that uh, I put uh, inside of this uh, normal dashboard. So we can uh, move this part. So in whatever location that we want to move. And then later on, uh, we show you the some um, detailed configuration of every part. So basically, uh, once you are in the main page of the Blink application, you can add some sort of the widget. So if you scroll the widget, so basically, uh, this is the, the first part. So the control will be something like the, the button, uh, the slider, joystick, and etc. And then the second part is the uh, value display is more something like uh, how you want to show something to the plane. So we have the value, we have the label value, LED, and etc. So uh, for each of the, let's say if I add the button. So uh, first thing first, you need to remember that uh, we have the energy balance here. So once you, uh, if uh, for the first time you create the account with the plane, so you will receive around 2000 energy balance. So if you Let's say you add some button uh, inside your application. So let's say I just put a button. So basically, your energy level will be deducted. Uh, so uh, previously, it's the 4700. Right now, it's the 4500. So uh, means that if you add more widget to your main page, so means that uh, everything will be deducted. So if I delete, uh, so if I just delete back everything, so it will restore my original energy. So if you can see from this part, so uh, my uh, balance of the energy is still 4700. So uh, let's say uh, once I select some button so let's say uh, i show you the configuration of this uh, particular button for the first part so uh this is our button I just, let me move so uh for this particular button so you need to select uh for this uh, part will be connected to uh, which pin so in this case uh, as i have shown you previously in our slides so we have uh, set our example in terms of the connection here so our first button will be uh, 12 second button will be 14 and then uh, for the uh, ir will be 27 and also the servo will be 13. so uh, in this case so for the first button uh, will be responsible in order to uh, simulate something like the first uh, push button uh, motion in the first part and then the same thing for the second part so it will be a uh, GP14. Uh, so basically, uh, this is some sort of the output pin that you can uh, select from your uh, configuration. So basically, once you uh, add some buttons, so you have some option whether you want to put the digital or you can select the virtual. So depending, so for this particular case, I will select the digital. So my previous configuration will be uh, 14. So uh, you just need, once you, let's say for this case, if you select the digital, so it means that uh, everything will be uh, directly related to uh, pin configuration of your uh, ESP32. 
So means that uh, I just select. So means that uh, this button will be used in order to control the GP14 uh, motion. So means that if I press the button, so it will execute uh, almost the same configuration of the push button of the uh, in the pin 12 of the ESP32. So uh, the second one is the virtual button. So virtual button is something like uh, if some situation, let's say in some configuration, if you wish to execute something uh, that's not directly related to the pin configuration. So for instance, let's say uh, if you want to, uh, let's say, uh, read the GPS reading, the mistake GPS reading, you have the latitude, uh, longitude, and etc. So uh, if you want to display that thing in the blink, so it means that for that particular case, you can use the virtual, uh, virtual pin uh, that able to show that thing in the uh, blink dashboard. So uh, the we have to pin here here. Uh, two pin here. The first one is the uh, first uh, pin, and then the second pin, and then we have the IR sensors. So for this uh, both pin means that when I press this uh, press this button, so it will uh, send the command uh, straight away to the microcontroller, depending on the location. So let's say for the first button, so it will connect it to the GP12. Uh, so means that if I press this thing, so it will uh, trigger the uh, event in the pin gp12 so the same thing with the second button uh, once i press this button it will trigger the event in the gp14 uh, in the esp32 and then uh, the next part is the ir sensors so for the ir sensors is uh, this is the 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 different type of communication so means that this is the communication from the uh, the previous communication is from the bling to the microcontroller, whereas the IR sensor means that from the microcontroller to the uh, microcontroller to the uh, Blink application. So for this particular case, uh, I select the virtual button. So in this case, I select the virtual button of the pin B0. So I will show later on how we can use this pin uh, configuration. So uh, means that once I receive the information uh, from the sensors from the of the sensors from the ESP32, so uh, it will send such information to the Bling uh, by using the pin uh, virtual pin of the V0 so that we can display that thing. So uh, I can show you uh, some sort of the difference. So let's say if I add some sort of the another display. So for this case, let's say I add the value display here. So uh, I will use this very display to show the status of uh, our uh, IR. So in this case, our IR was actually connected uh, to this. Uh, let me check that thing. So IR connect. IR was actually connected to a GPIO twenty seven. So if I select, I want to display the status uh, straight away. In this case. I just put the GP27 okay so now uh, the status uh, of our uh, IR will be shown in the GP27 so let's say if I run that thing again so in general so current status is high so you can see from here the okay let me move that thing to the top part so you can see that thing uh, because of the watermark somehow prevent us from see that thing clearly so i put that thing on top of everything okay so let me run that thing. So in this case, uh, the current status will be high. So if I put my hand, so it will turn to low. So this is a real time. So means that. So uh, I add some display to show the the current status of the IR sensors. So in this case, it is low, and then LED will be like on. So if I move my hand, so means that the current status will be high, and then I can see the IR sensors. So. Uh, so the same thing with the button functionality. 
So uh, this is the thing in terms of the Blink application. So this is uh, some sort of the how you can add some sort of the widget. You can uh, scroll all the corresponding uh, button, uh, corresponding display. You can explore that thing. Uh, and then you can see the detail how we can add a thing. So just please remember, uh, if let's say we just, uh, you just need to control the pin directly. So means that without using the virtual pin, so means that uh, it's easy. You just uh, need to uh, give some simple coding and then you can uh, straight away do the programming uh, in the Blink apps. Uh, but in this situation, uh, I will show you some example on how we use the IR sensors. So uh, in general, uh, when you open the uh, for the Arduino RDE for the configuration, so basically, uh, you need to install all the library in this part. So how we can install the library? So in general, uh, you have some sort of the option. Let's say you can use the uh, manage library features. So for the manage library features, so once you have this part, uh, you can okay, so it's updating. You can actually find the corresponding library, and then later on you can just uh, select which part of the library that you want to install. Okay, uh, just wait a while. Okay, okay, so let's say if I type B L Y N, sorry, okay, if I So this is the Blink. So uh, Blink already installed. So you can actually find all the version uh, that you want to install. Okay, P L Y N K. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, some sort of the Blink library. You can select uh, which version that you want to install. Uh, it's better to select the recent one. So once you install that thing, everything, and then you can uh, simply, once you install the library, so in general, you can uh, straight away, means that for this particular case, you can uh, just add this, uh, the header file. And then uh, you put uh, the token information from the Blink, and then uh, this is actually your Wi Fi uh, credential information. And then later on, uh, you just need to put uh, this code. So, instead, in the loop, you just put the Blink.run, then uh, everything will be uh, you can straight away control the digital pin uh, by using the Blink application. But uh, in some situation, uh, Let's say if you need to use the visual pin. So uh, this is the modification of the Blink code uh, that I have done uh, in order to control the servo. So the previous one will be based on something like this. So means that uh, we have this coding in order to control the movement of the servo motor straight away by using the push button. So if we modify that thing a bit, so for this particular case, we add the library and then later on we need to put in some sort of the uh, authentication information the wi-fi password so uh we have the blink dot run in the loop okay so this is the previous uh coding uh, that used push button in order to execute the motion of the server motor so uh for this particular case uh so we have some sort of the uh, check IR application. So check IR is the application in which it will read the IR sensor value and then later on. So for this case, uh, for the LED one dot off and then LED LED one dot on. So this thing will be straight away uh, by using this widget. So we have the widget LED. So LED one. So the V zero part here is actually the uh, setting that you have put in your Blink application. So uh, this is my IR sensors and then uh, so my configuration, this part is the V0. So here is the V0. So instead, uh, this is V0, we need to put the, the same setting. So once you uh, create the same setting, so in general, you can run this thing. 
So, uh, one thing that you should note is that uh, the Blink developer suggests that uh, you cannot put the uh, code that able to stream or send data to the Blink in the loop. So, the reason why is that uh, the loop is quite fast. So, it means that uh, it will execute the command maybe in the millisecond. So, it means that in one second for the millisecond, it will uh, send stream data, too much data to the Blink server and then uh, it will cause uh, if uh, we send too much data, so it will uh, cause the high traffic. So for that particular case, uh, what is the uh, developer suggests is that we need to ensure that uh, we only stream the data or send the data in some uh, specific interval, let's say every one second, every two seconds, and etc. So how we able to do that thing means that uh, we need to use the blink timer. So for that particular case, so this is some sort of the setting for the blink timer. So in this case, uh, what I do is that uh, I set the timer so that it will execute the check IR function. Only this is a 1000 millisecond. So every one second, it will check the IR. So it means that uh, it will be the, the safe way, uh, the same thing if you want to show uh, the data to the blink app. So instead, uh, you need to send that thing maybe every one second, so it will be uh, quite okay. Uh, instead of you just put everything in the loop function, and then it will, in millisecond, it will uh, send too much data to the Blink server. Uh, as the developer mentioned that if, let's say, it detects some sort of the application that send too much data to the server, so uh, apparently, eventually, they will block that application. So, uh, in order to ensure that uh, we don't do that thing so uh, this is the, the better way that was suggested by the uh, developer of the Blink to send the data so for this case uh, for every one second I will uh, check the IR uh, IR is actually the, the subroutine the function so the check IR is means that for this case uh, I read the status uh, this is from the Blink uh, aspect being we check the status of the uh, IR state uh, so means that uh, around one second so means that it will print the state and then later on uh, it will send the status straight away to the uh, Blink server so uh, basically this is the way on how we can uh, use Blink it's quite uh, very simple you can explore the possibilities so I really suggest that uh, you try that thing, uh, you have the ESP8266, I think, uh, so you can use that particular application uh, to test with the Blink and then maybe go for some uh, LED uh, and then read some sensor reading. Perhaps you can display that thing in the chart, uh, in the value or whatever. Uh, and then uh, later on, you can give some sort of the feeling on how we can control the Blink applications once we, the configuration. Uh, uh, there are many, uh, advanced part of the bling but uh, i show you the, the basic one so the rest you can explain that thing in detail but what i show to you uh, today is uh, quite uh, comprehensive in terms of how you're able to uh, switch on something from bling how you can read the status of the sensors and then uh, display that thing in the bling and then uh, how you can set up in terms of the pin configuration and etc and then another thing that uh, I want to show you is that so uh you have three ways actually in order to set up the Arduino IDE to read the the Blink library. So the first one is by using the uh, manage library, and then uh this is the first one manage library. The second one is that uh you can include the library in the zip file. So you can include that thing uh in the zip file by downloading uh okay the library from this side so you can uh, download the library from here in the zip file and then later on you can use this uh, part which is include library add library so once you add library uh, it will set up for you and then for the third option is that uh, if you download the zip file you can unzip that thing and then you can put uh, the file uh, usually the for the Arduino the file will be located in the document Arduino libraries so you can paste that thing in here uh, so once you put the uh, file configuration of the library here and then later on uh, you can uh, do the simple programming 
uh, you can straight away use the all the uh, functionality of the playing library inside of the that thing so uh this is uh, my uh, simple example of the uh, playing application so uh, i have some sort of the different application that i have developed uh, by using the playing so uh, this is uh, some sort of the tracking system so it will be a uh, much more a bit complex so for this particular case we have the i have the gps and then later on uh, for the gps it will be used in order to read the status and then later on uh, it can actually read the uh, read the status of the gps and then it can uh, lock and unlock uh, so this is uh, some sort of for the security application so uh, it will be quite easy to be straightforward you can uh, develop the application maybe i think less than 10 minutes only you need to explore the some of the widget and etc so this is my other application uh, in Blink. so for the tracking system and then the same thing uh, this is for the simple example so you can try that thing uh, in the next part of the lecture we'll uh, cover up into of how you can use the, the other platform which is the thing speak uh, how you can stream data to the thing speak and then uh, how you can uh, manipulate or do the, uh, the the coding will be a bit different uh, for the bling because the bling will be a bit simple but for the things speak uh, for the Arduino part you need to uh, develop a bit uh, it's not complex but uh, you need to put uh, a bit longer in terms of the coding uh, to ensure that you're able to communicate uh, with the things speak server the setup is not uh, really straightforward compared to bling uh, that thing I will show you later on so that's all thank you very much